live and this is the Dr. Boz show. Welcome everybody. I am streaming to you on Tuesday night. We're a couple minutes after the top of the hour, but it's only because I was really uh, putting together the last little, little details of what is going to be a great show. Something that I have a trivia question for you, but I also have a story for you that gets me to this discussion tonight. Um, because I have a sister, and I don't know if she's going to watch this or not, but uh, she has inspired this because the other day I was talking to her and she was checking out a new sauna in her area. And she's like, how do I know if it's a good one? And I said, well, you're in zone two, right? And she's like, what's that? I'm like, you do listen to all my lives, don't you, sister? <laughs> she said, sure, what's that have to do with my sauna? <laughs> Which is at a point I busted her. So we're gonna talk about zone two tonight and some of the things that are the best predictors for if you're gonna go through the effort of any type of metabolic stress, whether it's a sauna or an exercise, uh, you should be reversing your age. That's the point for what most people who are following me are looking for in the ketogenic diet. How well can I reverse my age? And there's some tricks to this. So before I get started on that, I'm gonna check my ketones while I look along the chat here and see, oh, we've got some folks from Pennsylvania, from Winston, Salem, North Carolina, never been there, but it's on my list. Somebody from Miami, also on my list. And I've been, but not really to hang out. <laughs> Just like to go to Haiti or something where it was a layover. So kind of like, not really, I guess. Um, and sorry, thank you, Deborah, for telling me that the sound is good. Always a kind of a little throw of the dice on this show, <laughs> whether or not the sound is good. Uh, I uh, have... A fasting update for you too so I'm counting down my numbers here you can see the ketones and glucose and um, glucose of 82 ketones 1.5 that doesn't surprise me pretty good not great but pretty good for me um, and I have been emptying boxes there's still boxes to my ceiling as I'm moving into a new house um, oh there's somebody from Fort Lauderdale too actually we have to go there in a, uh, just a hiccup so I'm looking forward to visiting that place too yes boxes are to the ceiling in my house uh, we are unpacking and well I'm a little restless because uh, at the end of the week on Saturday I fly to Texas and I head on a cruise the keto cruise I keep calling it the love boat <laughs> but it's really the keto cruise uh, and it's the second year we've been doing it. I do get to give my lecture again on lipoproteins. And I, I hear that KetoCon has just released that. So I haven't been sleeping great. I have been restless and thinking about how do I, how do I get all this done? I, I'm definitely of the adage that the day right before you leave for vacation is the most productive. But it might be the week before I leave that's the most productive. So as I find the floor in my, um, in my little adventure of <laughs> resetting into a new house, I really want it done before I leave for this vacation and we've been pushing to get it done. Um, all right, so I have a trivia question for you and I'm going to have my helpers uh, try to watch for the right answer. And again, I do think I'll have some time for questions tonight. Um, if the slides go the way I think they're going to do. If it takes me a little longer to do the slides, I actually have another parent event tonight for my son who had an event the, about two months ago for the wrestling season, but the pole vault season is just over and tonight is this uh, awards banquet. So I got a buzz over there. Um, not, not too far, not too, um, uh, not too long from now. So as I uh, prepare for um, uh, the questions at the end, here's the trivia question. So, and you have plenty of time to Google this, so let's hope you can find the Google answer. Uh, Stanford had a, um, had uh, a research team that was looking into what is the best way to predict telomere length. So think Oprah when I say the word telomere. Telomere length is, uh, you have your DNA. Your DNA is this long strand of coded information. And at the end of those strands is uh, kind of like the, the, the fused part of that DNA where it stops it from unraveling. 
Um, I like to think of it as a shoestring. Your DNA is a, is a shoestring. And at the end of the shoestring is that little plastic thing called an egglet. And those egglets are like your telomeres. As your body ages, those telomeres get shorter, 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 and shorter. And when you do that, eventually the telomeres start to unravel. Uh, uh, the DNA starts to unravel because the telomeres are, are too short to hold the DNA together. So there is a measurable, um, um, there, there's a way to measure telomere length that was, um, well, it was pretty remarkable. So I'm gonna see if you can come up with, uh, you can put your answers in the chat. I'll have my folks look for the right answer. Uh, I asked my team this today and they didn't know the answer either, so <laughs> it's okay. Uh, but if you'll notice the thumbnail that we had this morning or today on our show, it is of me laying on the floor, exhausted, trying to keep up with CrossFit. Uh, that was one of the workouts that I've done over the last few months. Not perfect, but I keep putting in my best effort. And as I learn more about what is the right way, what is the most important part to be focusing on with exercise, we're going to use that as we launch into some of the um, some of the lessons that I hope to hope you come away with today. Uh, all right, so let's hop over to the slides, and then we'll come back for some announcements in the middle of the. Um, in the middle of our little thing. Let's hope this doesn't crash. <laughs> Twice I've started playing it and it crashed, so I'm... Okay, so here we go. Improving your health outside of your diet. Um, okay, so the part of bringing up this slide was to actually remind people that when you look at um, the ketogenic diet and what I recommend for my folks, I do not talk about exercise at first. In fact, I had a teammate. We were reviewing these slides and really going through the message for today. And uh, I said this and she's like, well, um, you told me not to exercise for six months when I started this ketogenic diet. Are you, are you sure that that's still, are you, are you changing your mind? And I said, no, I'm not. When you first start on a ketogenic diet, especially if you were like this teammate where you don't have a lot of support, you're figuring out a completely new diet from the beginning of this, and you're a normal human being, you're gonna stumble, it's not gonna be perfect from the first get-go. Um, if that's you, which is most people, then I want you practicing that you are in a state of ketosis before we ever mention this word exercise, before we ever talk about stimulating your, um, your metabolic system. Uh, if you are watching me because you're trying to improve your health span, improve that longevity, then there are some definite important factors that you should be paying attention to, attention to that we're going to cover today in these slides. Uh, but step one is the way you fuel your body. And that is, I don't fast every week. That was what I was going to grab. I don't fast every week because it's fun. I do this, especially the last two years as I've been, we've had a huge commute in our, in our life, uh, and I didn't have a lot of space for exercise. The sauna that used to be in my house was no longer in my house. So I needed to make sure that I had a rhythm of stimulus for my metabolic health. And that was a fast each week. So this week I did a pretty good job of fasting. Uh, I think Sunday afternoon was the last time I had a snitch of food. And um, and then I, I, I did pretty good. I mean, blood sugar has been lower in the past. I'm gonna grab something, hold on. I'm gonna have a drink of water, but I'm going to put um, my pucker up in there tonight. So as I uh, pour that, uh, looking at um, the, the stimulus to your metabolism, to your metabolic health, the first and foremost, the most important part, and I've done lots of videos on why this is so important, is to get your, um, is to get your system um, fueled from the right kind of fuel. So let me flip back over to the slides here and keep going. Okay, so improving your health outside the diet. The best exercise is not the hardest. That thumbnail where I'm laying on the floor and I can barely breathe, uh, I've got a sweat, uh, a, you know, a silhouette of sweat under me when I stood up from that. Um, the, the, the routine of how you do your week has, has a, a powerful approach on what happens in a ketogenic state and what happens when your body is um, 
is under a metabolic stress. Okay. So there, here are two mitochondria. One of the mitochondria, the one at the top, is a healthy mitochondria. Uh, you'll see this beautiful ribbon around the outside. You'll see lots of folds along the outside. Um, I'm, I'm going to put a white circle around. That's the healthy mitochondria. This folding right here is where your body actually takes the energy that you're eating and turns it, or the, takes the fuel that you're eating and actually puts it into uh, ATP or energy. That's a blast from the past if you have ever taken uh, biochemistry or any type of biology where you say, how does a cell make energy? Uh, when you look at this mitochondria, the one that's older, imagine that it's about uh, one-fourth the size of, of the healthy one. So it's usually about this size in relative comparison. But I wanted to blow it up in this situation so you can see that there are fewer folds in this one and there's these holes. Um, and that's the slide that I was trying to show you, which is beautiful but I don't think my iPad likes it very well. So um, as you look at uh, what a, um, when a mitochondria is broken, uh, that, that defective mitochondria and the holes found in it, um, any fuel that comes to that mitochondria um, enters into the, the, the mitochondria, and you'll notice all of those little flying E's, uh, those are electrons that are not doing what they're supposed to. The beautiful slide that I couldn't play uh, sent those electrons along this slide, uh, along the outside of that mitochondria, and then into this proper place where, my, where energy is made. It is not wasteful, it is expected, and it is what drives our body. And the, the more efficient we are at converting fuel, our fuel, whether it's stored from our fat cells or stored in our liver, or whether we eat it, to energy predicts our age, which has, which has to do with that telomere question I was asking you earlier. So this uh, um, oxidative phosphorylation, which is, you don't have to know that, this, the normal way we make energy, the best way we make energy is this ATP over in the corner. There are two other side chains called lactic acid and succinic acid that are also made in your mitochondria. You don't have to remember these, but you're going to watch that little green bubble and you're going to watch the little blue bubble as we talk about them. So looking at a mitochondria, let's start with the broken mitochondria. And we're going to give a slide in just a minute that shows, is it you I'm talking about? Do you have broken mitochondria? And how do you know? Uh, we'll explain that in a minute. But what I first want to show you is in the setting of oxygen, and here is my little symbols to say, yep, there's oxygen in the area, but this mitochondria is broken. It has those holes in it. And when the fuel processes through that broken mitochondria, it leaks energy. Uh, we've talked about leaky gut on this, uh, uh, this podcast. Most people know I do not like that term. Uh, but the leaking of energy in mitochondria is a place that happens day in, day out in almost all of my patients. When that happens, the amount of ATP that's supposed to be made, the amount of energy that's supposed to come out of your mitochondria, is cut by about half. You still can have these little burps of uh, two side chains, which are going to come into play here in just a minute. So you look at this patient, and <laughs> this is what I see when patients show up with the medical problems like this. So I'm just going to read a smattering of these diagnoses. You've got Crohn's disease and strokes, ulcerative colitis, migraines, chronic fatigue, asthma, autism, hearing problems, depression, respiratory problems, uh, non-alcoholic steatohepatitis, hepatitis, uh, muscle weakness, heart disease, allergies, vis vision problems, seizures, arthritis, obesity. Uh, the list goes on. The chronic diseases that are found with, oh, with every internal medicine practice, that's what happens when mitochondria break, when energy that is supposed to come out of our beautifully formed mitochondria are not coming out of that mitochondria. They're barfing all over your cells and they're causing problems in your thyroid and in your brain and in your joints and in your heart and your eyes and all over your body. I mean, these medical problems come because of a very deep cellular problem where your mitochondria started leaking. So, after I said that, if you've been overweight more than five pounds in your life for more than six months, there have definitely been bro broken mitochondria in your life. When you compare that to this mitochondria, again, 
this one's beautiful. It has, it's a much bigger mitochondria. It is taut. It's very full of fluid. It's, it's stretched as far as it can stretch. It's, it's gorgeous. It's about a third bigger than that broken one, and there's no holes in it. So under the influence of oxygen, meaning it's well oxygenated, as the fuel spins through those that lining of those mitochondria, it makes a large amount of energy at the end. There's still a tiny burp that can be possible for lactic acid and succinic acid, but that's not what's used most of the time. And healthy mitochondria take that energy and they transfer it into fuel. Fuel for building bodies, for running your brain, pounding your heart, um, and, and living. If you watch what happens under low oxygen, so now we only have one oxygen molecule, it still spins fuel through your mitochondria. And that one little, that one little oxygen molecule uh, it turns into that little bitty, little bitty um, energy amount. But you'll make lactic acid and succinic acid at much bigger volumes when you take away the mitochondria. It's normal. It's what we're supposed to do. It's a built-in process that when we run out of air, or specifically the cells run out of enough oxygen, they have a default valve for at least continuing to make enough energy that they can survive. Unfortunately, it's also a marker of chronic, chronic, um, chronic health problems, meaning the, a wastefulness of energy, not, a, not lactic acid. So lactic acid is a sign of when I was laying on that, that thumbnail that I showed you where I've got a silhouette of sweat, um, that's because I pushed my body so hard that I couldn't keep up with making the good pathway for energy, and I had to use the escape valve. That's lactic acid. And although you've heard of people say, oh, that's what, where your muscles burn when you're running. Yeah, they burn for different reasons, but that's when the lactic acid is, is rising in your cells. That lactic acid is for, uh, made during situations where you take away oxygen, but you're still demanding a lot from your cells. Or you could say anything from your cells. The more you deprive the oxygen, the more the lactic acid in your system uh, rises. That lactic acid can then be used as energy and another fuel source, but it is the easy escape clause in a mitochondria to give a little bit of fuel just to get you through this hot second, and then it will wash away. So lactic acid is this thing that we measure. And when I was testing my sister on wh whether or not she had a good sauna or not, I was asking her about something that relates to lactic acid. So. In the setting of lactic acid, I was trying to help her say, well, how hard are you pushing? How hard is your body pushing when you were in that sauna? And of course, everybody, if you're like me, you always feel like you're dying. Like I'm inside the sauna and I am truly dying. I am truly dying. I must be dying. <laughs> so uh, having a uh, a zone of how close to death you are <laughs> is a much better way because subjectively, unless you're David Goggins, you, you feel like this, I, I must be dying. I must be dying. So here is zone one, two, three, four, and five is how we've, uh, we've organized or we've separated out how much, uh, how hard are you pushing your heart? So the way we find zones one through five is to take your max, we need you to find your maximum heart rate. Maximum heart rate is calculated in most of us. I mean, you can push yourself as hard as possible and see how high your heart rate goes up. Um, there's some protocols that we do in, an, in a cardiac stress test where every two minutes we raise the incline and increase the speed, and then we see how hard, how long you can hold it, and we're constantly looking at your heart rate to see what's the highest you can push it before you, you're going to collapse. Um, so maximum heart rate, 220 minus your age, and from there we then say if you take 55% of that, that, you know, 55% to 72% is zone one. Uh, 72 to 82% is zone two, 82 to 87% is zone three, 87 to 80, uh, 92 is zone four. But the truth is we got these estimates because we were studying lactate. All right, let me show you how that works. And I know if you're not a geek about this, this gets more interesting uh, the longer we go. So hang in there. So here are these zones. As you're exercising, as my sister was in the sauna, uh, I wanted to know how hard she was pushing her heart rate. 
And I could have had her go get lactate strips, just like there's ketone strips and glucose strips that I, I tested my, my Dr. Bob's ratio this right before we started, the, or right at the beginning of the show. Um, there are also lactate strips. Now, these are only <laughs> for the very intense exercisers. I mean, even most college athletes do not uh, have an intense uh, enough commitment to check their lactate during exercise because it lactate only stays high for just a hot second and then it will be within five minutes or within a minute or two minutes it's you know drops by 50 percent and then drops by 50 percent again so they have to check it while they're working out and i am just not that dedicated no i'm not that but i will watch my heart rate and i have set my apple watch to tell me if i'm in zone two when my Apple Watch does it, took 220 minus my age, 51, and then it did these percentages. So I know that my zone two starts at a heart rate of 134 and it ends at a heart rate of 143. At least that's what my Apple Watch said this morning. So let's hope it matches the math. But what's happening is as the oxygen decrease, uh, dec or as my heart rate increases, my body is needing more oxygen and my ability to match the needs of my body get mismatched that the the less um when there's less and less oxygen available at that mitochondrial level well, the higher the lactic acid goes and you can measure that so these zones are really looking at how intense are we at pushing the body when when we are trying to well when we're trying to get the best health so let's look here here we have zone one uh, and in zone one, I want you to notice all that oxygen at the top. This is fully oxygenated. You should have no problem with this. But I picked a mitochondrial pattern that is popular, that is common with my patients, with the people that I see. And you'll notice that they're all broken. There's four, uh, excuse me, there are four of them that are broken and one that is not broken. So let me, let me show you what these broken mitochondria do in zone one. Um, as we as we ask to, to ask them to make their fuel make their energy from fuel so let's start with the middle one you'll see that in a broken mitochondria it's making some fuel the regular way it's got those two little farts of energy off the side and remember the green one is the lactic acid and you'll see that there's a bunch of lightning bolts leaving these mitochondria that is to represent how much energy that was supposed to be channeled into that, that red bubble, that ATP that's normal, and your mitochondria are broken. So you push yourself into zone one, and most of the energy that's coming out of those broken mitochondria never gets to be used. In fact, it's kind of like free range target practice for any cell. It's like a free radical or um, free electrons is really what it is. And they bounce around and they hurt things. They age you. Uh, this is getting back to that Stanford thing. How can we pick telomere length uh, upon, you know, what, what's the easiest way and measurable way that we found to pick telomere length in a patient? Um, all right, so you look at the healthy mitochondria and it gave you this nice big bubble. It still has these really tiny ones. These are just there to, to remind you that it can do that, but in a, in a good setting of oxygenated place and a healthy mitochondria, it's probably not using these at all. I mean, it, you really have to stress the cell in order to do that. So let's move on to zone two. So in zone two, you still have these mitochondria that are leaking, uh, um, that are leaking energy, but now you're in zone two, you're taking away some oxygen. The reason you're taking away is now you've leveled up. You've asked that you, you've, you're on the treadmill, you're exercising, or if you're my sister, you were under a tax of heat and your body has to offload the heat. The person, the little organelle that's in charge of offloading the heat in your body are these turkeys, the mitochondria. So the question on whether or not she's in zone two, that's what that's where I was, uh, was what I was quizzing her on. She's like, what's zone two? Um, we're gonna get to that, so hang in there. So here's this mitochondria that's big, taut, uh, uh, and fluffy, uh, I mean, really nice and solid. And then these, these other four are wilted or wimpy. And when you look at the energy that comes out of the gorgeous one, it still has a nice amount of the red one. Uh, but now you can see that the green and the blue have increased their pathways too. Some of those oxygen molecules turn into that beautiful energy, but there are places where the uh, lactic acid is rising and there's another place where succinic acid is rising. It 
you don't care about that. Uh, but more importantly is to look how much you are wasting in zone two, out the sides, out the holes found in those mitochondria. So if we move up to zone four, so now <laughs> that's where I was on the floor of that uh, thumbnail. I have, I do not have enough oxygen. I hurt everywhere. I have sweat ringing off of me. But notice that these, uh, these lightning bolts are, are now uh, changing to red. Yeah, so what, what those mitochondria were supposed to stay there. So pretend the mitochondria is still there, but you have now an intense loss of energy happening in that stage four. Uh, while the mitochondria that was healthy has now almost no uh, none of the good energy coming out of it, and it's almost all lactic acid and succinic acid to keep the body going. So the interesting part is what comes next. Before I do that, I'm going to do a couple of announcements that I really want to make. First of all, uh, last week uh, and, and the weeks, weeks before, before, I had a problem on our, on our website that was I was trying to get rid of MCT C8, C10. Well, Thank you for all of you that helped me handle that problem. Enjoy the discounted rate of C8, C10. Um, but I will not tell you that we are out. And we don't have the next batch from the folks ahead. So uh, stay tuned. We will, um, we will continue to update you when we get those back in stock. The other part that I wanted to let you know is I sent out an email to many of you, uh, hopefully any of you that have signed up for our emailing list, that our website is going to be traded over uh, to a higher, faster platform. In um, It will be tomorrow, Wednesday, at 3 o'clock Eastern time is when we're going to launch the new website. But we will need about 36 hours to transfer some of the data from our old uh, site to our new one. And that means that our shop will be closed for that 36 hours. So if you need something, you need to order it today um, or before 3 o'clock tomorrow because at that point, we won't, well, the orders won't be back up until Friday at 7 o'clock in the morning. So uh, please pray that nothing goes wrong with that website as we transfer it over. We have been putting that off for a little too long. So we are thankful that it's about to be done. And it's done just in time for um, an announcement that we're so excited for, and that is um, next Thursday, I need everybody to go to the grocery store and look at Women's World. Uh, it is a magazine that is like, when you check out of the grocery store, there's the Inquirer, and then there's Women's World. <laughs> and it is highlighting two uh, folks that have taken the Dr. Boss courses and have just the best success stories. So uh, their praise, uh, first of all, you need to buy the whole stand, buy all of the women's world in front of you, and pass that story around because it is so inspiring. It is so wonderful to see these women who have gotten off their diabetic medica medications, uh, taken their hemoglobin A1C from 10, injecting insulin, lots of insulin, to on no medications and is no longer diabetic. Um, the, the, the other one has, oh, she's one of my favorites. We, I actually added her as a coach because she's just got the best. Um, here is zone one, two, three, and four. Uh, and that, um, that process of being able to measure their lactate and predict zone two. Why do I want my sister to know about zone two? Well, because she's not too many years behind me. <laughs> and if you're going to go through the pain, the pain of being in a sauna, the pain of figuring out exercise, well, for heaven's sakes, make sure it's worth it. What do I mean by that? So when we look at zone two, most of us have been around the block enough times that, and we've screwed it up. We've had too many carbs. We put on the weight. Uh, we didn't sleep as well as we should have and our mitochondria started to leak. Nobody told us, but if you look in the mirror and you don't look 18, you don't look as young as you used to, well then I guarantee you, you've got some mitochondria in there that have holes in them. Because on this scene, this place where the mitochondria are about a, you know, two, a, a third smaller than the healthy one, and they've got these holes in them, if I were to predict what the telomere length is in a patient where four out of five of the mitochondria were defective, they're wasting energy, well, they would look older. And, and that is the answer about 
how do you predict telomere length? So telomere length became this big craze, and Oprah had these uh, um, well, you know, lots of experts on saying, how can we measure my telomere length, and can I make it longer, and I, can I reverse age? What's the fountain of youth? And indeed, there are ways where you can lengthen that telomere, lengthen those little aglets at the end of your shoestrings, and restore your health. But it only happens if you are replacing mitochondria. If you're taking mitochondria that are broken and you're putting in place of them new mitochondria. Um, they actually had soft, they, they had several biometrics that they were looking at saying, well, how can we predict what, the, what is the telomere link? What's the age of the person? Um, um, you know, what, what is their telomere length? Should we be measuring, you know, free radicals or cancer markers? And they had lots of crazy things they were looking at. But the best indicator for the length of the telomere was face recognition software that predicted age. That when your brain looks at a person and says, oh my goodness, they look younger. Oh my goodness, you look healthy. There is something primitive in our brains where we look at them and it you can you can see youth well Stanford developed software that says predict their age and that software was the best predictor of how long is your telomere length and if you've ever seen somebody get on the ketogenic diet and say six months later not only did they look did they lose weight but they looked healthier if we were to take an electron microscope and actually had a had a gal in my uh, support group this morning ask, how do you see my mitochondria? And I had to go Google it. Yes, you do need an electron microscope in order to see these tiny little things. Having deflated mitochondria without as many waves in them, yeah, that only happens in research teams. But there's a look on people where they are improving their health. And it is proportional to how many of their mitochondria don't look like this. But here comes the fancy slides where they say they're not leaking that... Um, that energy out like this patient is, but instead they're doing this. So they take that mitochondria and they spin it, they, they, they break it down and they replace it with a healthy mitochondria. Now that's what I want for my sister. If she's gonna get in the sauna and she's gonna sweat in the name of listening to her older sister, uh, well, for heaven's sakes, I want her to get the benefit, right? So that means that I need to push her heart rate into zone two which is known for the greatest mitophagy. Yes, mitophagy is the, uh, is the zone where your body has the highest turnover of mitochondria. That it, zone two is where you should spend 80% of your metabolic stressors. Now, whether that or not that's a sauna or a workout, I actually don't care, especially as you're beginning a rhythm something that your body should be stressed under for um, for a pattern. And you guys have watched me over the last two, two years really struggle with my rhythm of life. Like, how do, I, how do I get a workout in? My goal was one time a week. I did not make it every week. Um, I tried, but I did not make it every week. Uh, now that I no longer have an hour commute to work and an hour commute home, my goal is actually two times a week while getting to the sauna uh, two to three times a week. And the sauna, I now have a pop-up in my, in my house because um, that's easy. And the goal is to make sure that my heart rate is in zone two. Why? Because I want my mitochondria getting enough of a stress out that they will, will, will stimulate the replacement of mitochondria. If I take my mitochondria and I push them to zone four, right up to that, that point where I was collapsed on the gym floor, um, I did more cell death, more free radical production than I did turnover of making new mitochondria. That the stimulus of mitochondria replacement is not pushing your heart rate way up to those maximum levels, which I've been known to do. <laughs> Not, that's not going to give me the best outcome. I need to spend 80% of my, my metabolic stress time with a heart rate in zone two. And I'm, when my sister writes in and says, hey, what is, uh, you know, how, how do I test my sauna? Don't test the sauna. Test the human being. Did you stay in the sauna? Did you get it hot enough that your heart rate got into zone two for 80% of that sauna? 80% of the time you were in the sauna. 
Now, sometimes you can't can't stand it. So maybe you can only hang out in zone two for three or four minutes, and then you go to six minutes, and then you go to 10 minutes. But that is, um, uh, that's the power of improving uh, not only your mitochondria, but making your pain worth it. So sister, I hope you were listening. All right. <laughs> so um, let's see. I have uh, about 14 minutes before I need to be at the school. So I am going to uh, hop over for a couple of questions. And then I do want to I do want to check my ketones at the end. I also had a question that somebody asked me a couple of weeks ago that I... I felt really bad that I didn't answer it. Two things that they said, what are you doing these days to break your fast? So I'll t tell you, I'm going to a, a school thing tonight that, well, it's got school food. Um, and although they do a great job, I don't want to be tempted. So I'm going to break my fast with two things. One of them is something that I have put on my Dr. Ross favorites page. Uh, and I went through this a couple weeks ago. I didn't have them with me. But um, I'll take a handful of these to break my fast. And it's as close to a vegetable as I eat usually. So um, you can check those out on my Dr. Bob's Favorites page. And my other favorite thing that I do week after week that I never take time to show you guys what I do when I walk out of here is I take, these are the carnivore crumbs and they're totally my favorite. The brisket is my favorite. Uh, and in fact, my kids said, what should I get you for um, Mother's Day? And I said, these, <laughs> that's what I like. And then I'll put my salt in it. And uh, it already comes salted, but I like it even saltier. And um, that's that's my meal. That's what I like to do because it's too late to really eat, and I shouldn't do that. And if I don't, if I get up when I would get home after commuting an hour, if I hadn't eaten, I just I would be thinking about food. I would start to do that naughty thing, which is um, that I deserve it. That's not a good place for my brain to be. Um, and the the process of all of the hard work that I had for fasting for two days, well. It all kind of goes out the window when you when you overeat when you get home. So um, those are both on my favorites page. I love those companies. They help me get through the week. Um, my team keeps asking me to do um, a uh, uh, a video on what you eat a day. I'm like, it's really boring. <laughs> Look at the favorites page. That's what I eat. Um, all right, so I'll check my numbers here in just a minute, but I wanted to make sure I said that before I got too off on a tangent. All right, so so I'm going to save that top question from Peggy uh, for an, another week um, because I really wanted Mark's question. Is vitamin D soluble in MCT and fish oil? Yes, it is. It is fat soluble. Uh, and it, they are, in fact, if I had the perfect brain serum, it would have vitamin D in it. It would have MCT, C8, C10, specifically looking at both of those. And a lot of people, a lot of brands out there just reach for C8 because it makes the highest ketones. But there is great literature that is, if you're looking in support of brains, C8 and C10 both cross the blood-brain barrier and, are, and an excellent fuel for your brain. And then finally, fish oil. I'd probably stir it into some sardines. <laughs> okay, Dennis writes in and says, um, help us distinguish lactates, lactose, and uh, lactic acid. Okay, so lactose, first of all, um, lactose is the sugar found in milk. Uh, it's two carbon or two uh, molecules of um, carbohydrates. So it's a di saccharide, dicarbohydrate, two carbohydrates put together, and it's what is the sugar in milk. So if you're uh, lactose intolerant, then you have, you, you can't process that sugar very well, or the enzymes that break it down are not your friend. Uh, lactic acid is a byproduct of what comes out of your mitochondria. It's actually a fuel and a signaling agent. Like, uh, there, it's, it's a stressor for your body. I mean, it's a marker of stress, like we just went through in those slides. And those slides uh, show that when you reach a higher lactate, um, it's a stimulus. Um, I hope the slides don't co convey the message that you should never have uh, um, zone four. You should try to hit that a couple times a week if you're really looking at the perfect, perfect plan. And again, this is not the message for people who are the first few months into keto. I do not encourage anybody to start this plan until six months in. And 
that's because it, there is such an importance in being stable in the foods that you eat before you start exercising in a way that I talk about on the show or that I have lots of people talk about on the show. Um, and then I, I actually can't think right now what lactate, so lactose and lactic acid, but lactate. Oh, I can't, I can't think where that one fits in, but I think it's another tangent. I mean, I think it's another like I'm sorry, I, t- I can't find it in my head, I'm sorry. So what happens to mitochondria after chemotherapy? Okay, that is a great question. Mitochondria after chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is one of those places where, just like those broken mitochondria, those wilted mitochondria, that's, that's a mitochondria that's been under a ton of stress. And we want those mitochondria to be replaced, mitophagy, we want new ones to be formed. When people push their heart rates up into zone four, like exhaustion, they are destroying more than they are rebuilding. So they're, that four out of five mitochondria are not working, they're dysfunctional, that is a typical story of somebody post-chemo. So in order to restore that body back to the best level of health, we need 80% of the time for you to be hanging out in zone two, whatever way you metabolically stress yourself. Um, and then, uh, John F. I wonder if, I wonder if that's John Ford. (laughs) I don't know, but, uh, let me, let me, let me look at this, uh, questions over here. So JF says, what is a healthy range for APOB and how do I lower it? So I'm just going to take, go out on a limb and bet that that's John Ford. John Ford is one of my favorite, favorite followers. Uh, he is, um, well, he is an engineering brain that has been biohacking his way into health. Uh, and when I was teaching the sardine challenge, he sent me a spreadsheet of what he did with his sardines. And I think he actually used maybe anchovies or mackerel or something. But it was so well plotted out and so well studied that it became a case in my 21 days to say, here is this wonderful analytic approach to why people should eat sardines. Uh, and he uh, bought the um, the replay of what happened at KetoCon, and I kept telling him, um, uh, John, you're, you're going to want to watch this. You're going to want to watch this. Because he kept asking questions about ApoB. I'm like, I'm not going to try to explain this through text. It took me 40 minutes with some very well-designed slides to hit this out of the park. You, you definitely need to watch this video. And I honored uh, uh, KetoCon by not replaying them. And I just got a message from John Ford that said, best slides ever. You hit it out of the park. So to get praise from John Ford is a really big compliment for me. So um, he's now asking, what should your April B be? Your April B should, we like it less than 90. Um, and then how do you lower it? Okay, so um, lowering it is, I mean, John Ford has a lot of things going right. I think his A1C, he checks it, he does it on his own, sends it in or has somebody check it for him, is 4.7. So that is an average blood sugar like in the low 90s or high 80s. His uh, C-reactive protein is 1.0 or less. So that's very low inflammation. So again, I never have people checking on cholesterol until they take care of these things that I went through in that lecture. They must hit an A1C first. They then need to hit a C-reactive protein second. Oh, let me say, you need to not smoke and not have high blood pressure. And then we can talk about your cholesterol and we should be looking at ApoB. Yes, if you do an NMR study, which looks at the different sizes of lipoproteins, it is perfect and beautiful, but it's not practical to study ApoB literally costs the lab about three dollars they might charge you guys 20 bucks but it's a super cheap test and you can do that over and over and over again to say how what is my marker what is my marker check the expensive nmr that you got to send in and get a special permission from your doctor check that a couple times a year but look at your apo b month after month after month just like i tell you to do a1c month after month after month until you get it down Uh, Those markers do a fantastic job of predicting heart attacks. How do you get it down uh, once you're already doing that well? Hmm. I might have to use you for another case, John Ford. The explanation just takes a little bit more than I can do today. 
So I am going to go be a mom. Uh, I have eight minutes before my husband will call me late. So I am going to sign off and say thank you for everybody. I will I will hope and pray that all of your Woman's World magazines disappear from the grocery store in your neighborhood and you go down the street and hand it to your neighbors saying, read this article because those women deserve praise. They really did an awesome job of telling their story. And I hope, it's my dream, that that the education that comes out of that's gone into their brains has these stories that inspire others to, hey, you can reverse this. You can reverse this. You can take those mitochondria. You can make them taut and lots of folds and producing good energy and not wasting energy. All right, I'm signing off. Uh, See you guys in... uh,